Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook. Oh, Rory. Yeah, fine, this is Coogan Cassius for IFL TV. I'm joined by the legendary Virgil Hunter. Um, first of all, what a fight that was between Joshua Poetsy and Dan Aziz. It was a great fight for the fans. I expected to be in that caliber, uh, considering uh, that they had to fight each other. When you got two friends fighting each other, there's always some animosity because, like, we're supposed to be friends. Why dare you? And everything. I'm gonna make you pay for it. We'll be friends afterwards. So that's the kind of fight it looked like it turned out to be. Let's talk about the eleventh round. Um, I mean, I've not watched replays of it from where I was sitting. Could be um, taken as slips. How did you see those two knockdowns? Uh, the the first knockdown, you could give or take. The second one was real because I was right there and I saw the punch land. Okay, and he didn't complain at all. And. He was hurt, so I think Josh was hurting Dan throughout the fight, which made him tentative. Normally, Dan is much more aggressive than that, but he hesitated tonight uh, because the body shots were doing a lot of damage to him, I could tell. But to give credit to him, he's strong, determined, and he hung in there. Absolutely. Credit to Dan Aziz, because that 12th round, uh, some relentless pressure from Boatsy in there, and he, he did well to stick that out. Yeah. He showed heart, he showed resilience, he showed determination. He's to be commended for it. I commend him for it in the job that Buddy's done with him. What is the step now? I know obviously he's just literally come out of the ring and you guys will assess and see what, what's next for him. But in terms of moving up in, in level, what's, what's the step now, Virgil, for Joshua? Well, right now, that's, you know, as, as I got to say, is his management's decision. They'll bring it to me. Josh just has to continue to develop, continue to hone his craft, continue to get a better IQ, uh, more better decision making. A lot of times he got caught in the firefight when he didn't have to. Um, and we'll see. Right now, it's, it's rest for me. I've been over here a long time. We've been in camp a long time, plus the camp we had in Portsmouth. So when we came, when the fight was canceled, we had already been in England for five weeks. Then two weeks later, we had to start again. So it's been a grind for me. So I need to have a little time off. And then we'll go over. I'm sure they'll be bringing something along that's um, enticing to the fans. But with his number one ranking and uh, his uh, promise of a title shot, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But, you know, promoters have other ideas. But if it makes dollars, it makes sense. There are still some opponents in the UK, like Anthony Yard, that those fights we haven't seen yet, that as fans we'd like to see, whether they're right for either of those fights, who knows. But is that a fight that interests you, that Anthony Yard fight with Joshua? Well, if it makes dollars, it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> it makes dollars, it makes sense. No disrespect to Anthony or Tunde and things like that. He's had two opportunities. He came up short. Uh, his comeback fight was against an older man. His comeback for his fight next week is not a opponent that he, is an opponent he's going to get out of there. So, I mean, when you have that kind of leverage, it's got to make sense. You know, it's got to make sense. So, I know it's something the fans want to see, but this is a business. So, whatever makes the most financial sense for Josh at this time, that's probably the direction we'll be looking at. Just finally, before I let you go, Virgil, what have you made of the, the heavyweight chaos that's been brought in over the last 24 hours uh, involving Fury and Usyk? And it was off yesterday due to Fury's cut, and now it's back on, rescheduled for May 18th. But what, what have you? I know you've been obviously involved in fights. So I don't know how much you've been taking notice of that, but I'm sure you would have heard about it. I heard about it, and you have to take it for his word. Um, it's unfortunate that it happened this close, but it happens in sparring. Um, I remember in the Super 6 when we were going to fight Frotch. Two weeks out, Andre got cut with a head gear on, a full head guard. And I'm trying to figure out how did that happen. But he had a cut up under the head gear and it had to be postponed for six weeks. So I know from experience it can happen. You can only take a man's word for it. It's all go always going to be skepticism. It's always going to be criticism in this sport. And it's all, because people want to see the fight. So you're going to have one side saying, oh, he's scared, he's a goofball and everything like that. And you have the other side saying he's cut. So the, everybody knows you can get cut and sparred. So i got to give him the benefit of the doubt until it's proven that it's not true. Well, as long as the fight happens on uh, May the 18th, we'll wait for an undisputed uh, heavyweight 
uh, situation well, for I'm 25 sure years. Will. I'm sure it will. When are you going home? Tomorrow morning. Yeah. Back to Oakland? Back to the Bay Area. Yeah. Well, listen, it's a pleasure, as oh, always. Oh, Thank you for your time. My pleasure. You've been great to me. You don't, you don't get clickbaits on the interviews. You tell it like it is. Right, we'll change the headline of this one quickly. No. Yeah. You don't, you don't we need get accused it. of clickbait all the time. You don't need it. You're a made man. You got integrity. So you don't need it. Virgil Hunter, thank you very much for your words You're and uh, safe travels back home. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook.